This is Dr. Kuldeep Kumar. I am consultant pulmonologist and intensive care expert at CK Villa Hospital. Today I am going to give some information on obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea, it is very important to know what is the obstructive sleep apnea, what are all the risk factors, what are what is the pathophysiology behind a obstructive sleep apnea? Because not everyone knows about obstructive sleep apnea. It is always it is always dismissed as being innocuous that obstructive sleep apnea is never existing as a disease entity. Obstructive sleep apnea has recently been diagnosed as a medical problem which is quite a lifestyle related problem which is happening in urban population most commonly being diagnosed nowadays we are getting patients in our OPD with complaints of unrefreshing sleep when they are wake up in the early morning along with so many lethargic symptoms not able to work routinely not able to concentrate on their normal routine activity so what is all about this obstructive sleep apnea it is very important to know so normally when we sleep during night there is a phenomena in sleep that when we sleep the respiratory muscles or the neck muscles around our upper respiratory tracts normally relax when we will sleep so as the respiratory muscles all around our neck they will get relaxed so they will give pressure on our upper respiratory tract like trachea and lower airways primarily starting from mouth so if we are suffering from obstructive sleep apnea this relaxation of muscle is very much pressure of respiratory muscles on trachea and small airways in the neck region would be very much high during the deep part of sleep this lead to increase episodes of snoring so snoring happens it is the first hallmark symptoms that is being noticed by the person who is accompanying and sleeping along with the patient who is having obstructive sleep apnea loud snoring is the first symptom which is being encountered in patients of obstructive sleep apnea snoring along with every person one out of 10 in a Lancet study of 2019, about 28 million patients have been getting these episodes of obstructive sleep apnea, which have been documented. So it is quite prevalent now. It is very important to know why it has happened. So person about the age of previously it was developing at any age. Now age criteria has been diminished from the guidelines because obstructive sleep apnea can develop at any age. So it can develop in children as well. So who are obese, morbidity, obese, weight, BMI more than 28, thick neck, coarse body structures and for coarse facial features when they sleep during night relaxation of muscles around the neck and relaxation of tongue muscles leading to retraction of all these muscles on the trachea and leading to obstruction of trachea and subsequently leading to loud amount of snoring snoring is being encountered by maximum of the individuals but all kind of snoring are not characterized or diagnosed as obstructive sleep apnea. So they would be considered as a sleep related problem but never diagnosed or never be considered as a obstructive sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is only considered when loud snoring is associated with when loud snoring is associated with decrease cognitive function like you are not able to concentrate on normal activity during daytime like you are not having active into normal routine you are not able to focus uh, on 
normal office work or home work where you are doing your activity so whenever you feel this kind of symptoms feel lethargic all the time feeling sleepy all the time feel laziness at unusual places like driving a car or while in malls or at uh, or at meeting sites so whenever you will get a chance to get uh, some amount of or sleeping you can easily go to sleep at unusual places at any time so what all disastrous effect a osa can cause to a person who has not been diagnosed with yet osa can cause to decrease in oxygen supply to the organs whenever person is sleeping during night and oxygen is not carrying from the nose to the lungs while he is sleeping he is continuously snoring snoring at that time so deprivation of oxygen to the organs during sleep happens deprivation of oxygen to the heart deprivation of oxygen to the brain muscles legs and musculoskeletal system continuously this process will go on during the night process and if it is a process of so many years when patients are avoiding their symptoms and never visiting a sleep medicine expert so de- constant deprivation of sleep and constant deprivation of oxygen during sleep can lead to major episodes of stroke major episodes of mi major episodes of musculoskeletal disorders as well as we have seen new onset hypertensive patients young patients who are on bp medicines recently diagnosed diabetic medicines recently diabetic recently diagnosed diabetic like this on diabetic medicine so continuously we are getting so many patients nowadays in our opds it has been seen in studies that if a patient who has been on thyroid diabetic and hypertensive medicine for whatsoever is the cause and if in meantime they been diagnosed as a case of osa and if their osa is being getting treated well with the kind of therapy which are available as per the guidelines their diabetes their hypertension and their thyroid can be prevented and patient have been treated without any medicine in due course of time and further follow up their medicine can subsequently be stopped because the etiology behind some kind of diabetes and hypertension may be related to obstructive sleep apnea so if you have any queries related to this entity which is obstructive sleep apnea we are very much obliged and welcome you to visit our website for more details what all things are new and what all things and modalities are available because if we are controlling this entity so we can save maximum lives thank you very much for patience hearing thank you